Yeah, good morning. We have an abridged class here today, but uh, the, the topic is uh, is as good as always, regardless of how many people are here, because the high school went skiing or something like that. Whatever. Um, so, my he is typically uh, a Shabbos that is dedicated uh, to um, to uh, the Kavra Kedisha and all that. And so, uh, I'm going to let Rabbi Kier speak about that. But I have a couple of these uh, little uh, brochures on uh, on it and what they what they do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pass them around. I'm going to give it to you, each of you on the table. Look at it. Take whatever notes you want to take. Take down whatever phone numbers or or, or uh, uh, websites that you want to do, and you just pass it to the next person, please. Okay. Thank you. Next week, next week. 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 Is a Shabbos dedicated Parshas Vayechi deal with Yaakov Vino, then the Parsha Yosef, were both quite involved in working out their burial situation, and they exerted much effort to make sure that it was done exactly the way they wanted it. And based on that theme, this association of Chavar Kedishas here in America dedicates the past few years, this Shabbos, as a Shabbos to talk in general about Chava Kedisha, but in specific, this, this organization itself does many things which are solely needed in the world today. Unfortunately, in the medical field, for those who know, you know, it's been going on already for some time, but unfortunately it's only getting worse. The constant issues that people in dangerous medical situations have, where at some point the hospital comes and they start advising people about pulling the plug, which obviously we've actually given a share about that in the past, it deals with very, very serious shilas of the uh, Kuach Nefesh, and uh, that's a big shayla. It's not something that simply could be uh, dealt with with the hospital staff that needs uh, rabbinic guidance. With that, caring for the elderly is also an area, you know, Baruch Hashem, with, uh, with advances in technology, in general, in this population, people are living longer. But with that, there could be a good amount of time that there's elements of dealing with elderly people, sometimes parents, relatives, and knowing how to care for them, knowing all the different halachas, is also part of the purview of this organization. Another area which this organization gets involved with is autopsies. And unfortunately, that comes up a lot in more you know, larger Jewish communities, the medical office already knows, has respect for Jewish traditions, Jewish halacha, and they know that they can't necessarily do an autopsy on a body in a normal situation. A chas a Jew passes away in some smaller spot, doesn't really have much of a Jewish community, or at all any Jewish community, there always are major issues. And this organization, amongst others, the Zaka organization, get involved and try to do whatever they can to prevent a desecration of a Jewish body, to preserve Kavod HaMais, which is also a very, very big mitzvah. And the area in particular which I want to talk about today is the area of cremation. When they asked me to speak for this organization, 
I already had planned that I'll talk about this topic. Why did I think I want to talk about this topic? You live in Florida. Hashkacha Pratis, a story that involved a possible cremation, happened on my block just within the past couple of months. I entitled today's share, try to give some color to uh, what could be a challenging topic. The little old lady and the big bad wolf. The dangers of cremation. And the story of what happened was there was a little old lady on my block. She lived basically by herself. She had a caregiver that came by every so often. My block, Baruch Hashem, came out all from people. And she had some health issues. I remember one Shabbos, she wasn't feeling well, going back a couple months ago. I'm pretty sure, next door neighbor to Rabbi Sam Shapiro, I think, they ended up calling Hatzala. And they dealt with her, took care of her. But unfortunately, a few months later, random day the caretaker came in. And unfortunately, found her that she passed away. So, you have a woman, she was a widow, living by herself, she passed away. Didn't seem that she had so much contact with her children. In fact, of what the neighbors knew, didn't have much of a good relationship. And unfortunately, none of the children were religious, to say the least. And there is a real pachat, a real fear of what's going to be with her. The Chavah Kedisha will cold right away, but you get into legal issues. What's going to be with the body? And there's a real, real fear that it could go the way of, unfortunately, many Jewish brethren that they cremated. I remember that night after she was in the whole chevra of women from the block went to the house they said tell him and uh, that was like a fear in everyone's mind you know we hope that they have proper cover on mace Baruch Hashem at the end she had written down on a will on a document that she wanted to be buried in a Jewish cemetery which is quite a big deal. In fact, I think the story was that her husband was not. Husband, I've been buried in a general cemetery, a Jewish cemetery. But she put in writing that she wanted to be buried by a Jewish cemetery, and that's what happened. I think Mr. Kopelman got involved, and Baruch Hashem, she got the Kavur Yisrael. But it wasn't an easy trip. It was a real shash that this woman would be cremated. And probably if it was up to her kids, in fact, some of them didn't have a relationship with her for years, the easiest, basic way would be to be cremated. And Baruch Hashem, for the fact that she wrote it down, as well as the involvement of members of the community, so the neighbors plus the Chavar Kedisha, because she was buried. Not some big deal. If you look, the New York Times in 2016, going back a few years ago, one of their Sunday magazines published a whole story about cremation in America. And the stats of it are shocking. America is a country Right? On our dollar bill, we say, in God we trust. If you go through the Bible Belt of America, most people are buried. They have funerals. The normal way. However, unfortunately, a growing trend starting in the more 
leftist, liberal, bigger states, but slowly spreading throughout the country is the idea of cremation. The stats, according to the New York Times, going back a few years ago, it was already over 50%, which is scary. You go back decades in America, the numbers were nothing like that. But as America slowly drifts away from religion, it's becoming more in vogue to cremate. And the Yiddish saying goes, what happens by the Goyim, fortunately, trickles into us too. And the unofficial stats in the Jewish world, Jewish world as a whole, are that its number is probably close to 40%. That sounds like the unfortunate reality. Reported here. 40 to 50 percent of Jews, and especially we're giving a share here in South Florida, where we know there's a large, large population of Jewish people everywhere you turn. It's a scary stat that almost one in two people, for sure in general in America, but unfortunately getting close in the Jewish world are opting for cremation over burial. And that's a scary thing. That's a sad thing. And we're going to go through today the basics of why that's so bad, why that's so scary. You look, one of the causes in general in America why people are opting for <laughs> cremation, it's already alluded to, you know. Everyone knows the role of religion in America is unfortunately on the decline. Sunday is more about <coughs> football than it is about going to religious institutions, shopping, but not too many uh, cities have blue laws Sundays still in America. One argument people give, it's cheaper. The cost of a funeral, especially if you have in a funeral home, taking care of the body, the transport in the hearse, till you get to the burial, it's easily thousands of dollars. Cremation simply, a lot of times, costs less. In general, when things get in vogue, especially in the climate of our country, it's like, it's a question on you. You're doing real, regular burial, really? So old fashioned? If you're not woke, if you're not into the current political climate, like, who are you? Unfortunately, it's become in vogue. People also claim, it's part of also society, oh, it's more environmental, it's better. You burn the body versus putting it in the ground. We don't have so much space for, to have uh, cemeteries everywhere. Come on, get with the times. Scatter, scatter the ashes at sea. That we have room for. Actually, anyone knows what's going on in Eretz Yisrael, they really do have a shortage of space for Kfura. Harmanuchos is building this fascinating catacomb of caves underneath it for burial. That's the runner up of the topic I wanted to do. But, and one other reason I so brought down why cremation is gaining so much ground. <coughs> Excuse the pun, is because that society today is so transient. When you bury a body, you put it in the earth, seemingly to last forever. Where families are constantly on the go, they live in one community, they move out. 
So, people want to have take their loved ones with them. If you cremate a body, you could carry the ashes, take it wherever you want. Fits in the U-Haul truck. <laughs> These are, as I state in the New York Times, factors of what's changing in America. Why the numbers are shooting up for the amount of cremations across the country. The cemeteries are pushing that they're running out of existing space. And so they are proposing to do two level burials even because they're right. running they're running out of space. So it's, it's right. You bring up the cemeteries, the funeral homes, it's quite interesting. Funeral directors themselves are copying the trend. And you would think who would be the biggest people against cremations? It's the funeral directors. It's the mafia. Hey, they're losing their cut. They're losing their cut. No one's doing uh, chapel services anymore. We have to fight it. But they see the writing on the wall, and they themselves are getting into the act of offering services for cremation and all different things. Unfortunately, even the Jewish world, Mishpacha ran an article a couple of years ago where Mishpacha, where Mishpacha talks about that there are, you know, there's money to be made, people do different things. There are urns being created with mugging dovids on them, so it looks Jewish to cremate. People could have a locket which carries with them the ashes of a loved one. They can take them wherever they want. And connects with people. <laughs> yeah, perfect for Kahana. If you have the cremation, we have, we have lots of problems. Going to. So, these are all issues which are affecting the world at large and unfortunately affecting us too. What I'd like to do today is go through where's the source of Kvura, of the mitzvah of burial in the Torah, where exactly is it from, different parameters in halacha about it, what happens when you have some of these tough situations, people want to get cremated. And we'll get to some practical cases and some fascinating stories about the topic. Now simply, if I asked anyone in this room, where's the source of the Torah for burial? Bring me the Makar. So people will say, oh, look, Avram Avinu, it's Beferish in the Torah, buried Sarah. Avram was buried in the whole Mara Samach Pela. It's the Avos. This week's Parsha talks about burial. You have Aram being buried, Moshe being buried. Burial is all over the Torah. So seemingly, those are all the proofs to it. But if you look at the first Maramakam on your sheet, the Gemara and Sanhedrin, you'll see it's not so simple. But that's a Makar for burial. And the actual source, the mitzvah burial, is pun intended is buried all the way at the end of the Torah. The 537th mitzvah in the Torah is burial. Not one of the first few. The Gemara begins, Gemara in Sanhedrin, Memvavah, Mabez. Yikin Amri, Amr, B'yochran, Mishim, Mishim, Ben Yichai. Ren is the Kvura, Men Torah, Minayin. Where is the source for Kvura in the Torah? Tom and Lomer, the Pasuk says, Ki Sakur Sikvaren, you should surely bury him. Mikan Ren is the Purim in the Torah. I'll go into more specifically what that source is in a moment. But the Gemara then brings an interesting story. Amalei Shavor Malkal or Bichama. Kvurim in the Torah Minayin. So Shavor Malka asks, Rabbi Chama, where, where do we know about burial in your Torah? Ishtik, he was quiet. He didn't say anything to her. Amr Rabbi Yaakov, 
So Alma biyade tifshi. Right? Why didn't he answer? He sounds silly. He bayle the meimar ki cover the lo averle aram. Maybe you can learn, read that pasuk. Cover to grenel is make an aram. Tik berenel lo mashbole. So the Gemara says, you know why he didn't say anything back to him? That look, it's also pasuk even from that pasuk because maybe it says you should put a body in an aro. But Lavdavka is a pasa clear that you have to bury it. There's different levels. One level putting a, a body in the Aram. Another one to put it into the land. In fact, we know that. There are people that bury loved ones above ground. So they're in the Aram, they're in the casket, but they're not in the earth. So the Gemara is saying it's sad. That hey, it's not clear from the pasuk that you have to bury the earth. So the Gemara says, "The name of the ikfert tzadiki. Why can't you say the proof is from the fact that all the tzadikim were buried?" Rashi says, "Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov." Why don't we have a proof from all their burials that burial in the ground is a Torah concept? So the Gemara knocks it off. Min haga ba'alma. You have no proof that that's a mitzvah, that's an obligation. Maybe that just was the custom. Maybe the custom was, at the times of Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, that we find in the Chumash, maybe it was just a custom to bury. That was going on. That was a common custom in the world. But you don't see that that's halacha. So Gemara says, in the cover of Kodesh Baruch Hu Moshe, I... So why do you prove from there? Hashem buried Moshe. The Dvar Hashem. This is what Hashem wants. Hashem did it himself. Look at this knockoff. So the Gemara answers, No, the Lishnei Mim in Haga. <laughs> you know why Hashem buried Moshe? Hashem is not going to fight the Menachem Makom. Fascinating. You know, the, the Rashi brings it to Chumash when the Malachim went to Avram Avinu, so they ate. Why do Malachim eat? We know Malachim don't need to survive on food. Where it says you shouldn't change from a minog. So, till now I thought, okay, I see Minhagim apply to Malachim. From this Gemara, at least as a Dichoy, the Gemara is knocking off. The Gemara says it could be Minhagim applied to Hashem too. You want to know why Hashem buried Moshe? It's not a proof that that's a mitzvah, that's a chiv to do. Hashem buried Moshe because that was the minog. But how do you know about us? So that's the Gemara that tries to bring other proofs, other psukim, and nach. And all of them, the Gemara basically knocks off, maybe it's a minog. But the basic pasuk, which we'll get back to in a moment, is this pasuk of kis cover yikur venom, tikur venom. I just want to read the next step of the Gemara because it's very interesting. Also, skipping down a couple lines, four lines from the bottom. Ibayilu kvura mishim bizyonahu, o mishim kaparahu. Very interesting. The Gemara asks, "What's the reason why we bury?" Is the reason why we bury, look at the Gemara's language, is it because bizyonos, to prevent the embarrassment, the <coughs> degradation of a body? The Gemara Davka fo focuses on, on, the Gemara focuses on the, the negative of the bizyon. The way Rashi says it, what's the bizyon? To see the person dead. You have, you know, the Goyish concept of having a wake. You know, I think that's part of their respect. Jewish concept is pumpfer Seeing a person after they passed away, even if they put on makeup on him, but that's a degradation. That's a bizillion. Obviously, the Chavar Kedisha have to deal with Tahara. They could see him. 
But for a person to pass by and see a dead body, right? That's a universal thing. Someone passes away, you cover the body, right? Every society has hopefully that ideal, right? Nowadays, sometimes have they, they kill somebody, and uh, pictures of the dead body are plastered all over the internet. That's a bizillion. I'm not sure even people should be looking at that. It's a bizillion to it could be a terrorist, it could be a horrible person, but there's a certain covered amaze covered for a body, a body is created in the image of God, and the Gemara says the reason why we bury is bizarre. Forget about the positive covered amaze. You're degrading the image of God when you're looking at a person and a body that's no longer living. So the Gemara brings that as one possible reason. A second reason the Gemara gives, or is because of a kapara, that when you bury a body, that is viewed as a kapara, as a means of tshuva, of a cleansing of that person's soul. And part of the process, when a person, we know when a person dies, he's getting the ultimate judgment. His soul is going to be judged for whatever they did in this world. So by burying, that's a form of doing things the right way, and that serves as a merit for his kapara. Big idea. So the Gemara is not sure. What's the reason? What difference does it make if you say it's because of Bizayon or because of kapara? The Gemara says, the Amr lo bi'ina de l'kuvura. The guy says, hey, I don't want to be buried. If it's because of Bizayon, so he has no power over that. The Gemara Rashi explains, because Bizayon is not just something for himself, it's an embarrassment for all of his relatives too. Anyone who's associated with this person. If his body is, is lying there in, in a disrespectful way, he just passed away and you see his body, so that's a bizarre, that's an embarrassment, not just for himself, for his family, and you have no power, you have no rights over your family's bizarre. However, <laughs> if it's your own personal kapara, so look, it's your life, Maybe not, but you have the choice. You want to lose out near Kapara and uh, take more of it up there or down there from the heavenly justice? So be it. That you have power over. But if it's out bizarre, if it's in terms of embarrassment, the degradation that's going to come to your body, it doesn't just affect you. It affects your relatives, the whole family. So that you have no power over. It's interesting the way Tosos learns over there. I put Tosos in the sheet too. Tosos says, for sure, both of these are factors. When you bury your body, when you bury someone after they pass away, there are two things you're doing. You're preventing a bizillion to the body, and you're doing a kapara. The Gemara's whole question is, what's the main factor? Is the main thing this or the main thing that? But either way... It's something, they both are factors. So we'll see. I believe Ramosha is going to quote this later. But these two factors of a kapara and prevent the zayon, an embarrassment, a degradation to the body, are two things active anytime a person is involved in kavura. So after you have this kamara, the kamara itself is not crystal clear end of the day, where's the source? So the Rishonim talk about it better. I put in the sheets the Sefer HaChinuch. You know Sefer HaChinuch explains the mitzvos. Look what he writes. Again, this is towards the end of the Torah, the 537th mitzvah. The cover of Bo Bayo, the mitzvah is ideally to bury a person the day that he passes. Chin Kol where do we learn the mitzvah of burying a body? The kavu mishen nitla by Yomahu. 
It's from someone who receives capital punishment. You're killing this guy who's a Russia. Capital punishment. You hang the person. That day, after his public hanging, you bury him. That's what the Pasuk says. He covered to Kareno by Yomahu. Russian said free. He covered to Kareno by Yomahu. Mitzvah say. Let's look at the explanation of the mitzvah according to the Sefer HaChinuch. He explains, be sure she on mitzvah. The roots of the mitzvah are Mashish Giru Zakon of Rach, the Mishnah Parak Nikmar Adin. Mara says, in Sanhedrin Sham, Sham Rusham, he kill us Adam Tali. The curse of a person is hung. Klomar, Shlo Yomar Abrios, people shouldn't say, Neimazet Tali, and they should kill us Hashem. Hey, why is this guy getting hung? Because he cursed Hashem. Nimsa Baz Kiram Zev Alosama Dover. They're going to blow it out of proportion and talk about too much. Causes bad. So interesting. This possibly covered to Perenu is by capital punishment. And by capital punishment, it might be an additional smart the Sefer Chanach is saying it's important to bury him. So this way, it puts an end to that chapter of the person who did something wrong, who has to pay a price with his life. But really, this is not just a makor. If this is the dignity, the Torah treats somebody who committed capital punishment, so of course that dignity, as we see from the Gemara, <coughs> that bizayon that we want to prevent, or that kapara that we want to give, applies to every Jewish person. Yes. It seems like, it seems like a, a little bit of a contradiction from everything that we just learned that we're going to bury it this, uh, on the same day. It should say you're going to bury it immediately after the hanging to be consistent with everything we learned already. Okay. Yeah, I assume when you bring up when exactly you're burying this person's capital punishment, I assume it is as quick as possible. I assume the, the you know, by Yom Aru. So why doesn't it say that? Why does it say that day? <coughs> Sounds like you get to start hanging around for a while. <laughs> so I'm not sure. I, I believe there was some, there is some idea by capital punishment. Um, yishmu is everyone should see what happened to this person. They should see and take lesson. So there is that element also. We do want him, as you put it, hanging around a little longer. <coughs> but there's a share to that. Akan. Bo Bayom, we get the message across. But as soon as the time comes, we end it and we have to give them the proper burial. Yes? Obviously this is going to be answered, but as of now, I don't, I don't see how this is relevant to uh, the, the stam person who's nifter. This seems to me much more similar to a situation, you know, we, we didn't have signs all over Yerushalayim to say where is the base of Mikdash, but we did have signs all over the place, Miklat, Miklat. So they <coughs> wouldn't be talking about where you know, where's, where's your mikvah? Whereas, there should be a conversation about how Right. To You're saying, for, if you just had this pasuk, it sounds like it's a special thing for killers, <laughs> for capital punishment, there we bury. But you're right. I'm, I'm, I'm pointing out that the, the application of this concept is not limited to there. We expand it. I should have in some ways. His, his logic itself, you're right, is some degree of limiting. But... We apply it everywhere, and every person deserves this kapara, this lack of bizayon, by making sure that they're buried. And practically we treat it that way, is that there's a 100% chiyav to bury every single person, every Jewish person that passes away. There's another important halacha, which comes up, and that's Rabbeinu B'chayi brings on this week's parsha. Is this... Wait. Hold on, hold on. Let me come back to that. Rabina Bakaye says, Yaakov Vino asked, the Kavarti, the Kavarasam, I want to be buried in Marasa Machpela. I want to be buried in the family plot. He writes, Mikanam Ruchazal, Lo Mikbar Adam Tzadik, Eitzel Tzadikim, Shenemar, Vahim, Krovim Ish, Vine Razi. Hold on. Quotes another Pasuk. That Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar learns there's a specific Indian. Here he's talking 
a, a tzaddik shouldn't be buried amongst Rishayim. Tzaddikim want to be buried amongst Tzaddikim. And Huadin, well, first we'll learn out, we'll talk about this also in a moment, that a Jew should be buried by Jews. A Jew should not be buried in a Gentile cemetery. And this is a big deal. There are so many variations, you know, where a person could be buried. And we know the traditions, right? You have Jewish cemeteries. You could have a big area that has Gentiles buried too. But as one, one part of the burial ground is reserved only for Jews, that's a Jewish cemetery. And even within a Jewish cemetery, a lot of times you have different chevras, different areas. Usually, in the area, of, especially of a, of a big rav, a big rabbi, that is considered sacred ground. And uh, you want to get a plot over there, it's going to cost you. <laughs> I'm going to hold back from saying uh, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. But. <laughs> That's not yeah. a riot for the few burial. That's yeah. the only thing. Some of that's where it comes from. Buried, if you're getting buried, it should be underneath. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is already the next phase. Assuming there's a mitzvah to bury. But we see this is Rebbe Mechai here. Moshe will talk about this a little more. If there's an idea that one should be buried. It's a mitzvah for one to be buried amongst Jews. And even amongst Jews, it's actually brought down the Svarim that we said part of being buried is a kapara. Well, if you're buried near a tzaddik, there's a special schosim that itself could help with a person with their, their kapara. They're in good company. They're buried next to great people. And that helps out too. It's a big Indian. And, uh, you know, there are so many different stories of like, where different gedolim ended up being buried and it's of people that just have to be buried nearby. I'm thinking about one that hits me. You know, in Yerushalayim, the two most famous cemeteries are obviously Harizasim, overlooking the Harabayas, and Harmanuchos, which became, especially, you know, until the, after the Six Day War, when there's no access to Harizasim. So that became, so many Gedolim passed away. Yidin passed away in that whole period. They were buried in Harmanuchos. Harmanuchos became such an amazing, amazing base of Kvaros. But there's another base of Kvaros, a small cemetery. It's actually right down the block, not far from uh, Chavetz Chaim Yerushalayim. The Sanhedra base of Kvaros. So in that cemetery, there's a tzaddik who was buried there years ago, or Ari Levine. Tzaddik in our times. He was buried in that cemetery. Well, for the most part, there was no the small cemetery. Didn't have the big fanfare of some of the other cemeteries. But the Misa, over the past 20 years, big Sephardic Rosh Hashiva, Rev. Ben Sion Abashol, the Rosh Hashiva Parat Yosef, he was buried there. I remember a huge Levaya. The Shmuel Berenbaum from America, he was buried there in Tisrael. He was buried over there. And then Later, Maron, Vavadi Yosef, he was buried right over there. Where was he buried? In the Sanhedra Beis Akvaros. Mom is right by Chavetz Chaim Yerushalayim. Down the street. Huh? Mom is down the street. Right off the street. Yeah. Right, right off Shmuel Anavi. Varilan. You could go, and the Vavadi Kev is right there. What I thought was so interesting, do you know who was buried right next to Vavadi? I assume Stam, he had the plot there. It's actually my cousin's grandfather's. Hail Giyid. Is sort of great uncle. Is her Pinchas Tights. Pinchas Tights is originally the Dafyomi tapes. Gave Shirim over the radio, the Rav in Elizabeth, New Jersey. He's buried. And I might be confusing. Was Pinchas Tights or his brother, or Michal? Or his brother? No, I'm confusing. His brother, who was the, the Rav in, in, Q, in Q Garden Hills. Pinchas Tights' his brother. Happened to have Karka right there. He's one, he's buried in is right next to Rivaja, right there. Amazing thing. So, 
Yeah, there's big schosim to be buried near a tzaddik, but for sure, for a Jew to be buried in a Jewish cemetery, it's for sure, it's a big Indian. So, practically, we see from this background, the Gemara, the Rishonim, that there's a mitzvah to bury every Jew. There's a mitzvah to bury him in a Jewish cemetery, ideally in the best possible of people. What that means practically is when you have a cremation, a Shiloh about a person being cremated, that's a big deal because you're missing out on Kavura Sisro. If you cremate that body, there's no Kavura. Our emotion will go through this in a moment. I'll show you inside. Kavura is only for a body, for a Shadra for a spine, for the bones of a Jewish person. Once you're cremated and there's nothing but ash, there's no issue about burial. <coughs> you can put the ashes in the ground, but that's not burial. Burial is to a Jewish body as is. And someone who Rahmat doesn't get Kavurus Yisrael, gets cremated. So then, <coughs> anyone who could get involved to help a Jewish person be buried, that's what you call a meis mitzvah. Meis mitzvah. Right? We know the halach of a meis mitzvah. You're walking down the street, or not down the street, you're out hiking in the middle of nowhere, and you find a guy, I guess nowadays it's not a raya if you see a mugging dove on him, it just means his father's Jewish. But let's say you come across a body and you find out that he's Jewish. And you're a Kohen. Hike in the middle of Africa somewhere. Find a body, you're able to confirm this is a Jewish body. There's no one else there to bury him. Halacha is even a Kohen. Kohen Gadol, Nazar. Everybody. Mes Mitzvah. Any Jew gets involved. It's such a big Indian to bury a Jewish body. Especially there's no one else to do it. Where there's no one else to do it. Everyone has to get involved in that mitzvah. What's interesting is the cremation issue is something which is, in a certain sense, easier. You don't have to get your hands dirty. It's not where you find the dead body and you have to put it into the ground. It's a means of communicating and talking with people and convincing them this is the right way to go. And that for sure anyone could do, including Kohanim. I want to go through a few interesting shilas, which will put this even more into perspective. There's a safer I came across, uh, Osher Weiss, my Eretz Yisrael, quotes it, Shal Tshuva's Mach Nechaim. It deals with a very interesting shiloh. There was a Jew, sounds like going back a while, who traveled through non-Jewish countries, and he didn't represent himself, he was a businessman, didn't represent himself as a Jew. Nobody thought he was Jewish, didn't act like a Jew. But this is how he lived his life for business. And seems there is an issue. He wanted to write into his will that he was afraid one of two things. Look, I'm going to die in this city everyone's they're just going to bury me in the regular cemetery like everybody else. So to prevent being buried in a Gentile cemetery, should I write in my will to cremate myself? That's the issue the person was dealing with. So the Rav, Shal Shuvah's Mach Nechaim, firstly, it sounds like in the Chuva he gave him quite a bit of tochacha for why are you carrying yourself as a non-Jew your whole life, right? And perhaps maybe that's why you dealt with such an issue now that you lived your whole life as a non-Jew, so maybe that's why you're dealing with the fact that my bury you as a non-Jew too. But then he comes out and says, his psak is, it would be better to be cremated than to be buried amongst non-Jews. Who said that? 
This Shal Tshuvas Machne Chaim. I don't know who the author is, but the Minchas Asher, Asher Weiss in Eretz Yisrael, brings us in a sefer. In contrast, <clears throat> on the back of your sheets, I have a long tshuva here from Moshe. It's from Chela Ches of the Igros Moshe. <clears throat> when Moshe was dealing with somebody, the situation was a Jewish person who lived in Russia. And we know in Russia, communist Russia, where all religion was forbidden. So the situation was, there was no such thing in Russia as a Jewish cemetery. And his, his, his family had a loved one and a father who was buried in the common Russian cemetery. And they were getting out of Russia and they wanted to take their father's body with them. They knew they were getting into trouble. He was already buried in Russia amongst the guy. And they decided the best way to get him out would be to cremate him. So they cremated their father's body, took him out in his ashes, felt they could get out of Russia. And now they were coming to Ramosha with the Shaila. Could they bury him? Could they bury those ashes in a Jewish cemetery? Both sides, this is the Shaila itself is so sad. This is what happened to Jews in Russia. He buried, he died, and they buried he him. died and they buried him in Russia in a Gentile to stadium to take cemetery. Him out they want to take him out by cremating him and then bury him in America and Israel. So firstly, Ramosha goes through the facts, sadly telling them that, unfortunately, once you did the step of cremating him, there's absolutely no chiv to bury him. Burial is only for something that's left over. So once ashes, the definition of something being left over is the shadra, the spine is the skeleton of a person. Once you destroy that, there's, there's no chiva burial. <clears throat> Moshe, though, does say that, hey, look, since this is your father, Moshe has an interesting chiddush. What's the halachas of kibbut of the aim? Moshe assumes kibbut of the aim is not limited to things which are actually in honor for your father. But things that the world perceives as honor is also true. Even if it's something that really has nothing to it. But the world perceives it as some degree of an honor. That could be kibbut of aim too. So Moshe felt in this situation where you're doing it as a child because you care for a father, you want to bury him. By all means, you want to do it, you could do it. There's no chiva burial, but you could do it. He even says the people shouldn't stop them. Ah, you're burying someone who's cremated in this. He says, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't take away any part from the cemetery. But Ramosha then touches on this Shiloh. He says, look, in retrospect, this is the sad point of Jews in Russia. They didn't have, many of them didn't have anyone to ask. They didn't know any better. They grew up without a Jewish education. The ultimate Rachmanus. The most dangerous thing is Jews who grow up without a Jewish education. You didn't know any better. You never went to ask. You went to teach you. But Ramosha says, if you would have asked me the Shiloh, it would have been better for you to leave him buried in a Gentile state than, than to cremate him. Ramosha writes, it's on the third column on the top of the page. It would be better for you to bury him. Ramosha quotes the Gemara we started with. That burying a body is a kapara. <clears throat> you still have that kapara when, wherever he's buried. By Gayim, by an Akum. He says, Not make a rare the kapara. And he says also the whole Easter to be buried amongst Goyim, amongst the Russia, is also his kavod. But the Indian of Hasashom burning a body, cremating a body, that's much worse than burying him in a Gentile cemetery. Who, who said that? 
from Moshe Feinstein. So when I read this piece, I realized we should publicize this. Anyone who ever and you know has a situation, you know, this organization talks about that it's very to die for a person nonchalantly. If you know any secular Jews you interact with business wise and this, you're able to have a conversation about what are your plans for uh, eternity to bring up this issue about being buried. Think about it this way. Would you ever consider, a person, even a secular Jew, would you ever consider being buried in St. John Cemetery? No. I wouldn't do that. So you know what? The greatest authority of modern times, Moshe Feinstein, says cremation is worse than being buried in St. John Cemetery. Doesn't matter if they put a mugging David on the urn or you carry in a locket the ashes into synagogue for Yizker. Right? It's not Tommy Mace, don't worry about it. But Ramosha says it's worse to be cremated than to be buried amongst Klein. Azoi Dr. Ramosha. Besides Kamara, what else is a person to lose out on by not uh, by not being cremated? He said that's the ultimate design of a mace. You're embarrassing the body, it's hurting the body. We find in in Sarim that there is a tremendous amount of pain that the Shama has when it separates from the body. And that's part of the reason why every moment a person could <clears throat> be buried quicker, it eases the pain. And all the things done during the year of Shiva, during the year of, of, of uh, Avelos, all the different st stages from Shiva, Shloshim, 12 months, are a means of easing the pain of that neshama. Chas Shom, when the neshama is callously burnt, it hurts. So, a good question. I did not see that brought down anywhere. There's no Tchiyas Amesim. You know, it might be a tricky thing because it talks about Tchiyas Amesim starting with the Shedra, different bones, Malav Malka bone, right? But, uh, unfortunately, there's plenty of people yeah. that were free. Right, yeah. right. The people so, in, in the Holocaust who went through this, Avada, 100%, we believe, they'll be the first ones there for Tchiyas Amesim. Uh, these other situations, not so simple. But hold on, I'm, I'm sorry, this is a fascinating topic. Uh, I found that put in the bottom of your sheets, they talk about also, could you have a Levaya for someone who's cremated? And again, also, he said, ideally, you know, if there's a Levaya for someone who's cremated, and not so simple for a person to go to it, it might be Messiah, you're assisting someone doing something not the best possible way. If a person is a Tinech Shanishba, and they didn't know any better. Okay, maybe. What can you do? But uh, this Mishnah Allah is right. It's even ideally, a person should get involved with that. But either way, cremation it, it is it's a bad a bad thing. I want to tell over two stories, two amazing stories that I saw involving cremation. There was one secular Jewish person who was ready to why he's writing up his will and was gonna put in the clause to cremate him. And one of the grandkids who was a Baal Tshuva living in Israel found out about it. And they spoke to the grandfather about it. And this grandchild was able to convince grandpa that hey, it means a lot to us. Please leave we want to connect with you even after you're gone. Please, let's do it the Jewish way. Burial, we have a grave site. That'll be the ultimate respect for you. And they're able to convince them. Sometimes family members don't want to get involved because it's too touchy. But we saw the bazillion of a mace not being buried is not just a bazillion for the father. It's a bazillion, Rashi told us, for the whole family. And it's something that's not rice in the whole family. But it's not just families. Really, anyone to talk to any associates, the importance of Jewish burial, where the rates are going up and up, the amount of people doing it. And I'll tell you another story, an absolutely amazing story. 
It was written up in Mishpacha magazine. This Mrs. Robin Mayerson was a secular Jew who Baruch Hashem became a Baal's Tshuva. She was a big advertising executive in Scottsdale, Arizona. And she became from, got involved with the Kolo, I think in Phoenix. And today this woman is actually the West Coast representative of this organization, National Association of Chavar Kedishas. So she herself started getting involved with Chavar Kedishas. And uh, right after she did her first Tara, she, well, her, her uncle, the story calls it, Uncle Arnold, passed away. And being the fact that she was cognizant now of these halachas as a new Baal's Baal Tshuva, she tried talking to her cousins. Hey, you got to bury Uncle Arnold. you got to bury him. And the family wasn't religious, and they didn't want to do it. And they were fighting her, and she, and she kept. She knew how to sell things. She was in marketing. She was trying and trying. Maisa didn't go. This woman said, okay, look, I'm not getting anywhere with the burial. I want to do something for my, my uncle who passed away. And there's an organization, Chevra Lomde Mishnayis, some place in Lakewood. You give them money and they'll set up someone to learn Mishnayis, Zecha Nishmas and Nifter. So she reached out to this organization and paid for Mishnayis to be learned for this uncle of hers. That same night, she signed up, they started learning Mishnayis that day. That night, Uncle Arnold's daughter had a dream. Uncle Arnold came to her in a dream and begged her, please, please, please bury me. This is a totally secular person. She ain't dreaming of uh, people coming to her in dreams. She did not want to bury her. She had her mind made up. But the schos of learning Mishnayis, the father came to her in a dream. She gave him bury him. It's amazing. She told this lady, you can't imagine the merit you have for what you did. The story has it. It's printed. This lady, when this whole thing happened, was 44 years old. With the next year, on the yurt side of Uncle Arnold, this lady had a baby boy. 44 years old. Pasha the schus for being osik in it. The woman who was involved, this Mrs. Mayerson, the one who pushed for it, she had a child born a year later on the yurt site of this Uncle Arnold. And really it's with Fair Shurbain Bachai in this week's parsha. Rabbi <coughs> Bachai at the end of the parsha says, when you take care of of really, Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar is talking about all mitzvahs, but Kol Shekein, the mitzvah of Kuvur Sameis, which takes a lot of involvement. Yaakov asked Yosef to please be involved and take care of all the details of my Kuvur. <coughs> Yosef was faithful to his father, did exactly that. What happened when Yosef passed away? He had the ultimate honor of Moshe Rabbeinu, the greatest leader of all time of the Jewish people. He himself, by Yikachas Atzmas Yosef, he took the Atzmas Yosef out of Mitzrayim and made sure they'd be buried in Eretz Yisrael. And Rabbeinu Bachaya says it goes one step further in the cycle. Moshe Rabbeinu, when everyone else was involved with Bezos Mitzrayim, he got involved with taking care of the Atzmas Yosef. He was dedicated to that mitzvah. When Moshe Rabbeinu was Nifter, he had the ultimate kavo, the Kodesh Baruch Hu, the Kodesh of Atzmo, was the one who buried him. And anyone who gets involved in any, any measure, whether it's supporting the Chavar Kedisha, publicizing, it's still mind-boggling what goes on in this community. It's such a beautiful thing. Anytime it needs help with something involving Kavur, the word gets out. There are people to speak to, and things get done. We have a big Achrayas living in Florida. There are a lot of elderly Jews there, a lot of people to take care of. But the community responds to the challenge. You realize the schusim that one gets, especially if you're able to convince somebody who otherwise would be 
not be buried, to have a burial. The schosim, it worked for Mrs. Meyer's son. She had a baby on her uncle's yard side. It worked for Yosef. It worked for Moshe Rabbeinu. That should be a schos for all of us. Thank you very much for listening.